A beautiful Lenten Tuesday upon you, my friends. Thanks for joining me and the team here in the chapel on this fine spring morning. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know I'm biting at the bit, but I don't care. It's getting a little warmer and I'm looking for the daisies. But thanks for being here. And folks, before we begin, I, I just have so much gratitude and love in my heart. I have to give it to you in thanksgiving for so many of you who have contributed to our almsgiving drive. Oh my gosh, we wanted to build one classroom in this preschool at our parish in Kenya. And we've already hit our goal. <laughs> Do you believe that? One week of Lent. We got five more to go. <laughs> so friends, don't stop though, because you know what we're going to do? You know what the Lord is asking us to do? Not just build one of those two classroom school. We're going to build the whole school. Both classrooms that will serve over 100 kids. That's what the Lord is asking us to do, obviously. So I just want to say thank you and 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 keep donating those chocolate mochas <laughs> and uh, turkey sandwiches because so oh, many kids are going to benefit from that blessing. So, gosh, we are blessed. Thank you. Anyway, okay, thanks for joining us in prayer. Let's begin turning our hearts in gratitude to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed, you have redeemed the, world. the world. Psalm 23, The Good Shepherd The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For I'm being pursued only by your goodness and generous love. Then afterwards, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you and all those I've ever loved. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Joel, verses 12 to 14. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abundant in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may return and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings, and a drink offering for the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Fast, weep, mourn. All of these feelings we hear from Joel today are innately human. They are feelings we feel at some of the darkest moments in our lives. And more often than not, they change our lives, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the work, worse. But when I think about returning to God in this way, I can't help but look at each part of the Lord's call. 
One of the pillars of Lent is fasting, and on Fridays we don't eat meat, and on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday we fast in a more substantial way. However, the reason for fasting is not just trying to lose a couple pounds in 40 days. It's about making room for God. And by removing the focus from these earthly things, we can focus on prayer and making room for Jesus before we enter into the Feast of the Triduum. Returning to Christ weeping is one of my personal favorite ways that the Lord wants us to return to him. Anyone who knows me knows that I am a little bit of a crier, doesn't really matter the situation, I'm just more easily overcome with emotion than I'd like to be sometimes. And that's why I think my favorite line from the Gospels are when Jesus goes to see his friend Lazarus, who has died. And there we see the shortest line in the Gospel, Jesus wept. I think it's the most beautiful and profound because it tells us so much about Jesus. Not only is he fully man and fully divine, but he has felt all the same emotions that you and I feel every day. He weeps for his friend because he is sad. He shows his vulnerability, but in the end he shows his power and grace and brings Lazarus back to life. Finally, we hear the Lord telling us to return to him in mourning. Everyone at one point in their life or another must take time to mourn. It helps us move on from difficult times that are difficult or sad. Just like Jesus with Lazarus, he mourns the death of his friend. It is difficult to leave those we love without mourning. And that is why the Lord is calling us to return to him while doing so. He's not asking for us to remove our humanity. He is asking us to come to him as we are in it returning to him in the face of all those things tugging at our heartstrings. So, my brothers and sisters, I would ask you today to join me in returning to the Lord with all our hearts, in fasting, weeping, and mourning. In fact, as we draw closer to Good Friday, we may be doing all these things at once, because our Lord is gone, and he has been killed and the world is without its savior. Still yet, we return to him with all this pain and sorrow, and he transforms it, he shapes it, and he shapes us in the process. Because even though he is gone for those seemingly endless hours after that dark afternoon, in a few days, We will be searched for the living among the dead, and he will be gone, and we will rejoice. And as Jesus taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, it seems unimaginable that the Lord of the universe would also be the friend of my heart, but so it is. Through listening to your word, through honest and constant prayer, through serving you even as you loved me, let me grow in friendship and intimate fellowship with you. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we end, together we pray our Lenten prayer. Lord God, transform me into yourself. As I journey through Lent, guide my thoughts through prayer and my actions by fasting and self-denial. 
help me to seek you above all things and to serve you with an ever grateful heart. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for being with us today in prayer. Spring blessings upon you and may God in his love for you hold you and protect you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to check out our Lenten page, PrayBeautiful.org, and let's walk our journey of Lent together. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.